I think most programming languages are designed for CPUs for single core, even just in their spirit, even if they allow for parallelization. So wh what does it look like for a programming language to have um, parallelization or massive parallelization as its yeah. like first principle? So the canonical example of this is the hardware design world. So Verilog, VHDL, these kinds of languages, they're what's called a uh, high-level synthesis language. This is the thing people design chips in. And when you're designing a chip, it's kind of like a brain where you have infinite parallelism. Like you've got, you're, you're, you're like laying down transistors. Transistors are always running. Okay. Yeah. And so you're not saying run, run this transistor, then this transistor, then this transistor. It's like your brain, like your neurons are always just doing something. They're, they're not clocked, right? They're, <laughs> yeah. they're just, they're just doing their, they're doing their thing. And so uh, when you design a chip or when you design a CPU, when you design a GPU, when you design, when you're laying down the transistors, uh, similarly, you're talking about, well, okay, well, how do these things communicate? Mm -hmm. And so these languages exist. Verilog is um, a kind of mixed example of that. None of these languages are really great either. Yeah, I mean, very low level, yeah. Yeah, they're very low level and abstraction is necessary here. And there's different different approaches with that. And it's, a, it's itself a very complicated world, but, um, but it's implicitly parallel. And so having that as a as the domain that you uh, program towards makes it so that by default you get parallel systems. If you look at CUDA, CUDA is a point halfway in the space where in CUDA, when you write a CUDA kernel for your GPU, it feels like you're writing a scalar program. So you're like, you have ifs, you have for loops, stuff like this, you're just writing normal normal code. But what happens outside of that in your driver is that it actually is running you on like a thousand things at once. Right, and so it's it's parallel, but it has pulled it out of the programming model, and so now you, as a programmer, are working at a, a uh, in a simpler world, and it's solved that for you. <laughs> right? How do you take the language like Swift? Um, you know, if we, if we think about GPUs, but also ASICs, maybe if we can dance back and forth between hardware and software. <laughs> okay. uh, is you know, how do you design for these features to be able to? program, make it a first class citizen to be able to do like Swift for TensorFlow, to be able to do machine learning on current hardware, but also future hardware like uh, TPUs and all kinds of ASICs that I'm sure will be popping up more and more. Yeah. Well, so, so a lot of this comes down to this whole idea of having the nuts and bolts underneath the covers that work really well. So you need, if you're talking to TPUs, you need, you know, MLIR or XLA or one of these compilers that talks to TPUs to build on top of. And if you're talking to circuits, you need to figure out how to lay down the transistors and how to organize it and how to set up clocking and like all the domain problems that you get with uh, circuits. Then you have to decide how to explain it to a human. What is the UI? Right. And if, if you do it right, that's a library problem, not a language problem. <laughs> and that works if you have a library <laughs> or a language which allows your library Writing a lot, man. to write things that feel native in the language by implementing libraries. Because then you can innovate in programming models without having to change your syntax again, <laughs> and like have <laughs> to invent new f code formatting tools and like all the other things that languages come with. And this this gets really interesting. And so, um, if you look at the space, the interesting thing once you separate out syntax becomes what is that programming model? And so, do you want the CUDA style? I write one program and it runs many places. The um, do you want the implicitly parallel model? How do you reason about that? How do you give developers, you know, chip architects, the the ability to express their intent? And that comes into this whole design question of how do you detect bugs quickly, so you don't have to tape out a chip to find out it's wrong, <laughs> ideally, yeah. right? How do you and and you know this is a spectrum. How do you make it so that people feel productive, so their turnaround time is very quick? All these things are really hard problems, and. Um, in this world, I, I think that not a lot of effort has been put into that design problem and thinking about the layering and other pieces.